at the very outset of this evening's gospel, we read, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his, his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel tells us that Jesus loved his own until the end. My dear brothers and sisters, how many of us can truly be like Jesus to love until the end? It is difficult enough even to love our loved ones right till the end. Because our love is limited, we are not so capable of unconditional, unlimited love. We can only love so much. Indeed, how many of us, although we say we love our spouse, our children, our parents very much, but not much enough very often to die for them. Our love is always, in many times, occasions, conditional. Let me ask you, will you continue to love your spouse who has betrayed you in love? No. If your spouse has betrayed you in love, the first thing you want is revenge and divorce. How many of you will continue to love the baby in your womb, especially if you are not ready for that baby? You love yourself more than the baby because you were born the child. That is the way people love. In truth, even though we claim that we love our loved ones, I think, in all honesty, we love ourselves first. If you know that the baby is going to be born, he is going to be mentally, physically challenged, will you abort the baby? Because that baby is going to inconvenient the rest of your life. Again, very few would keep the baby because they do not have the capacity to love. So too, your children, if they keep on failing in the exams or some of them have turned to be evil, getting involved in drugs addiction, in gambling, will you still love them? So you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the truth is, again, perhaps not. And finally, let me ask you, would you continue to love the priest that served you, even if they commit mistakes and scandals? I don't think so. You will condemn them. You will despise them. You will never give them a second chance. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, how then could we say we loved our loved ones, or worse still, our strangers, until the end? But dear friends, the Lord Jesus loves us until the end. He is unlimited in love. He never gives up on you or on me. No matter what we do, no matter what we have done, no matter how evil we have been, the Lord is always ready to accept us, to love us, without conditions. 
Indeed, when God created the world, He wants humanity to share in His life. And we have gone the other way. And He did not stop loving us. He sends prophets after prophet to urge us to repent. And yet, we don't listen. And so He sent His Son, emptied Himself of His divinity, assumed our humanity, to be one of us, to be one with us, so that no one can ever say, God does not understand. God does not know how difficult it is to love. God does not know what it means to be betrayed, to be humiliated, to be misunderstood, or to suffer. Jesus, who is God in His humanity, so identified with us, revealed to us God's mercy through His works of healing, exorcism, reconciling sinners with God. But His love goes beyond that. He was not simply a good man living the life of God. He died an innocent death. He is just like that lamb in the first reading from the book of Exodus. A lamb that was unblemished, sinless, sacrificed, and the blood painted on the door so that the angel of death would pass by. It's the blood of Jesus that frightens even the devil. That's why the blood of Jesus, the innocent lamb, can save us. And it is so true, my dear brothers and sisters. What changes people's lives is when we suffer innocently. Most of us suffer because we are guilty. But when we suffer innocently, lives are transformed. Again, the love of God goes beyond that. Not only we are told so beautifully, St. John described him. He got up from table, removed his outer garment. That is to say, not only he had emptied himself of his divinity, but emptied himself of his humanity. When he died on the cross, and as if that was not enough, he stooped down, took a towel, wrapped it round his waist, and poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet. The symbol of a slave. That is what St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians. He emptied himself of his humanity, became a slave even unto death. And we know, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus died not just an innocent death, died a most cruel death, shameful death. How many of us, unlike Jesus, when we are accused wrongly, we want to take revenge, we want to justify ourselves, not Jesus. And how many of us suffered so shamefully as our Lord did? None. He was a son of God. He was stripped naked. My dear brothers and sisters, when we think of the love of God, then what should we do? What should be our response? Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Simon Peter felt totally unworthy. And that is how we feel. We feel unworthy that God would love us when we have been such great sinners and traitors. And so like Simon Peter, we said, Lord, 
please don't wash my feet. I am not worthy. This is a beautiful attitude when we come before God. I am not worthy. But precisely because we are not worthy, that is why the Lord wants to wash our feet. That was what the Lord said to Jesus. At the moment, you do not understand what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Why did Jesus become man and die for us in such a cruel manner? So that when we look at Jesus, we will never ever doubt the love and the mercy of God. So Jesus wanted St. Peter to recognize his sinfulness and the almighty love of God for him. Only the love of God can convict us, can change our lives. If we have never experienced the unconditional love of God, we will not be moved, we will not be touched. And have you experienced the love of God? That was what Jesus again said. When Simon Peter said, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. Those of us who have been baptized, yes, our sins have been forgiven. But have we encountered His merciful love? That's the reason why we all need to renew his love for us. Because once we are convicted of His love, what will the consequence? We are told after He has washed their feet, He went back to the table and said, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am I. If I then the Lord and Master have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given examples so that you may copy what I have done to you. What is this example? To do what our master had done for us. What does it mean to wash the feet of others? For many of us, we think washing the feet of others is simply to be a humble servant, to serve others. That is true. But it's not the full answer. Yes, we must be like Jesus, always available to serve and not only to serve, because there are many people in the church, they serve God, but they don't serve with humility. It's not enough to serve God. We must serve with humility. Humility, my dear brothers and sisters. A service without humility will not display the love and mercy of God. And the greatest service what we can do for our fellow men, what is the greatest service? Is forgiveness. The washing of feet is the washing of sins. So my dear brothers and sisters, let me ask you this question tonight. Tonight, this is the tritium. Is there someone that you want to forgive? Is there someone you cannot forgive? If you want to wash the person's feet, this is what you must do. The Lord Jesus has forgiven you. You must learn to wash the feet of others. Jesus had washed your feet. But until you wash the feet of others, you cannot be healed. So, do yourself a great favour, my dear brothers and sisters. After this homily, we are supposed to have the washing of feet. But because the service cannot be prolonged, we will invite you to wash the feet of your brothers and sisters at home after the service. If you are ready, because the greatest gift we can give to anyone is to release them 
from guilt. If you want the Lord to release you from guilt, be prepared to release others. Otherwise, you remain in your own prison.